on this occasion, I just want to congratulate SHM for initiating the dialogue on med uh, medical devices and particularly towards Atmanirbhar Bharat. There was a time when most of the devices, medical devices were imported. Today, we are nearing self-sufficient, but miles to go before we say so. Enough is not enough in this direction. There are two, three important advices I would like to give to medical advice uh, industry. Number one, that we must emphasize on quality. Quality and quality. Because the moment we make a thing which is uh, appreciated, which is dependable, which people believe, that this is equally good or better than made in Germany, made in Japan, I think that would be our satisfying. The better good, the good will come. The consumer will come. The bad good, the good will come. The, the goods will come. And therefore, that is one thing. The, another important thing is you have to invest in the, in the innovation. If we know, if the engineers, the technologists go to the hospitals, interact with the doctors and identify what is the gap, whether it is a point of care or whether it is an investigation for the simple thing like HB1 AC, maybe serum creatinine or maybe b liver function test, these are the diagnostic which everybody requires at the cheaper, affordable and at the point of care. We are talking of the ventilators. There was a time when we were short of ventilator at the COVID time we had to import. And now we are ventilator, not only our own country, but we are exporting it. Medtech um, Zone AMTZ in Hyderabad run by my colleague Jitendra is a phenomenal and that has been replicated being multiplied by number of places. Lastly, I would say the take home message is a collaboration between the academic institution, which will act as a uh, validating centers, collaboration with the industry, which will upscale the ideas of the academic institution and interacting early with the regulator because ultimately this will go for the registration and also improving quality VIS standards. So I think the we are on a very right direction, but the progress has to be not in, uh, in arithmetic scale, it has to be logarithmic scale and that's why we can become import surplus or import exceeding the import and the exports will increase and the import will should be zero in next five years or six years. That should be our target. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Namaste from this beautiful Asocham event um, in Delhi. Um, the theme of the event is very simple. It is ideate, innovate and impact. Ideate because we have come here together to ideate strategies, to ideate products, to ideate technologies. Innovate because innovation happens when there is a partnership between the sectors, between the stakeholders, which is truly happening here. An impact because this is the gateway as SOCHAM's first event, the gateway to make India self-sufficient in medical technology. Myself, Dr. Jitendra Sharma, Founder and Managing Director of AMTZ's world's largest medical technology cluster. We are pleased to be here, pleased to be part of the first report that ASOCHAM has released. Uh, not every conference or a strategic meeting has a white paper of the quality of content that ASOCHAM has brought out. This report truly defines the path forward and help us together in taking this journey of ideate, innovate and impact. With hundreds of stakeholders, industry partners, government agencies, all assembled, converged together in this beautiful ASOCHAM MedTech event, uh, we are truly strategizing on what could make us more powerful, more progressive to make India's medical technology sector reach the sweet spot of $50 billion within next four to five years. Thank you and Jai Hind. India as a country today is in a very interesting space for healthcare sector. And within healthcare sector, medical device sector, which has been acknowledged as a sunrise sector by Government of India, is definitely going through a transition phase where a lot of thrust is happening in manufacturing in the country. I think uh, we as a sector have largely been dependent on imports till now. However, for the first time this year, there has been 
and decrease in the imports of medical device and increase in the exports of the medical device. Okay. Today, I think the government is focusing a lot in promotion of local manufacturing by coming out with schemes like PLI for medical devices in the high-end medical equipment space. Government is also focusing on the research and innovation by coming out with schemes like PRIP where they are promoting industries to get into the space of research and innovation for medical devices. So overall, if you see, this is definitely a very interesting phase for the medical device sector and we are happy to be part of this phase as the industry and we feel that from here, all we can see is a growth path for the overall medical device sector. Thank you so much. Okay, the topic is health, san uh, health sciences renaissance. What would exactly that mean? It means it's in cusp where you have done all the hard work and you are at the edge of changeover. So huge thanks to the people who have done hard work in all the sciences, engineering and IT for 50 years. Today, medical sciences is at a great point where we have to do reap the benefits of all those hard works. India, with the vision of being number one in the world by 2047 and Atam Nirbhar, we are in the right step. So I urge all of us to use this important point and take the reference of all the existing material and make India self-dependent in the times to come. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, the, today we are here for the one of the very interesting uh, event, which is basically the health tech, med tech devices. Uh, the road to about $50 billion uh, industry med tech by 2030, it's something, it's really now we can, is visible. Uh, we're all here because the healthcare has gone up and the, can pay the investments in healthcare has gone up, the need has gone up, and India is definitely on the verge of, uh, you know, probably taking over and maybe one of the largest uh, manufacturer in India or the world, because as of now, uh, we are uh, much behind uh, the various developed world, but the basic requirement is here. I think we have been growing almost like a 20, 25% over the last couple of years. And the need today is to collaborate, be together, understand the quality, that's the most important part. And not only for us, I think I'll say domestic manufacturing, need is to make quality products which can be exported. There's a lot of demand for uh, the good quality product. And of course, uh, we have the great, uh, you can say, the infrastructure, uh, the, can, uh, the push from the government of India. We're talking about uh, Make in India, Atmanirbhar Bharat, and of course, all support what's required. So I'm pretty sure we're going to grow up and uh, the, we can be, be the, one of the you know, export capital of the world and when it comes to the mid-tech devices. But be together, work together, and collaborate together. And I think adopt the technology without hesitation. And of course, the regulators, compliances have to be in place. If quality is the top, we can really rule the world. Thank you. Healthcare space is exploding. Many segments of it, which were mysterious or, or mystified, are getting demystified. These segments, like medtech, are also ready for huge change. So it's the right time to invest in healthcare in India, in medtech in India. I'm Anjan Bose. I'm the founding secretary general of Nat Health and past president of Philips Healthcare and Philips Consumer Lifestyle. Um, India is going through a very interesting a renaissance, renaissance in healthcare overall and relations in uh, medtech industry. It's a revival, it's a growth, it's a progress. And with any progress comes uh, the associated challenges. So I think we are at a very interesting point in both healthcare as well as medtech. I've been in medtech for, uh, and in healthcare for more than four decades. I have never seen so much of buzz, excitement, positiveness, growth, and the, resol the, the resolute uh, collective will to overcome the challenges. For example, in the morning session, uh, we heard the good news uh, from one of the eminent speakers that import has been reduced by 4% and export has grown by 14%. That's so good news. At this rate, um, we were told that by about 2029 or 2030, 
we should be import neutral. So this is an example of what joint collaborative efforts of the private sector and government ha can do for a country. Long way to go still. I think we have come to a state where uh, we have a springboard for moving to the next level where India can be a major global medtech player. And I would, I would say that let's all follow the simple mantra of C square I, which I believe in, CCI. Commitment, collaboration, and innovation. Commitment to medtech healthcare of uh, the country, of society, and medtech plays a very major role. It's, a, you know, any hospital, the total cost, um, if it is 100, medtech um, is uh, about 30 to 40, 30, 30 to 40%. So it plays a very major role. So commitment, all of us must have. Collaboration, teamwork. We all must work together in the industry, and this ASOCHAM event is a, uh, is a great example of doing that. Collaboration we must have. We must not be judgmental on diverse views. So collaboration and innovation. Like I said in the morning session, um, Einstein once uh, famously quoted that someone who says he has never made a mistake has never tried anything new. Therefore, the message is we must innovate. We must take the risk jointly in the society of medtech, healthcare, and try something new so that we are able to take some risks, but we will get the mileage in this great growth and progress journey in medtech and in healthcare. Thank you. I'm an uh, international cardiologist and uh, happen to start uh, many of the procedures like we open the tight valve of the heart with a particular balloon, a new balloon, similarly closing heart bowl and valve replacement. Now many of these devices we still import. Now our goal is that we have to start manufacturing these devices so that well, anybody can afford. Because right now the problem is the high cost. Affordability is very important, quality is very important, and now having done a lot of work over a period of 15 years, now we have reached a stage where various brains like high IT and uh, other uh, talented uh, uh, persons can utilize their talent, and uh, we are not less than any other country, and ultimately, we can start making all sorts of medical devices and uh, bring India in delivering the health care at the top. Hi, I am Aditya Kohli from Allied Medical. Uh, we are manufacturers of anesthesia workstations, ventilators, uh, both for intensive care and emergency use, patient monitors, infusion pumps, uh, defibrillators, and uh, monitors. Uh, so we've set up a very recently we've set up a new factory in Bewadi, uh, which is on, in Rajasthan, about 90 minutes from the New Delhi Airport. Uh, this is one of the largest facilities for life-saving medical devices in the country. Uh, we feel that this is a very opportune time for investing in India and specifically in manufacturing medical devices in India. You know, with that vision, this facility is there with, which is one of the largest facilities, like I mentioned, for life-saving medical devices now in India. Uh, the government has done its bit to, you know, uh, it's been setting up new policy decisions. The new medical device policy has been launched last year and the roadmap is being set on how to bring in the growth. I think it's the right time for the private industry to now come in and set up uh, new shops in place and focus on manufacturing in India. You know, there are a number of initiatives from the government side, whether it is the PPO, the public procurement order, which gives preference to Indian manufacturers. Uh, or overall increase in demand with the new projects which are coming in, both in the private and government sector, uh, which lead to a new, uh, the right time to have it to make in India, to invest in India for medical devices. Uh, thank you. Healthcare space is ready for disruption and the time to act is right now. What we see is a convergence of science and technology leading to better healthcare solutions and delivery. What we have also seen is that by investing in this sector, there is an economic growth and also this leads the path for a resilient and a better society. By investing in this sector, what we see is we have an opportunity, a very big opportunity to reshape 
the trajectory of the healthcare space. By investing in this sector, what I have also realized is it helps to democratize access to all, one and all. And I'd like to conclude by saying that let us seize this opportunity by investing in this sector and building a healthier and an equitable future for all. Thank you. India definitely uh, is at the cusp of uh, growth. Um, the recent report by Avalon, which is published by Asocham, clearly indicates by 2031, the medical device will reach a level of 50 billion from the current 12.1 billion. That itself shows that we are up and on for a high growth. There are multiple areas in which the growth is expected, be it uh, uh, imaging devices, be it uh, diagnostics, IVD, be it uh, stents and uh, implantable devices, knee implants, balloon catheters, cardiology, or be it surgical sutures and the area. Uh, the growth is tremendous because the potential is tremendous. Our own uh, population is also huge. Disease incidences are very many and everybody deserves treatment. So healthcare for all is going to happen and needless to say insurance schemes public and private put together including the Ayushman Bharat gives right to everybody to get access to the health care. So a quality health care with an access is something uh, which is going to drive the growth from the so-called 12 billion to 50 billion by 2030, uh, 2031 and we are very positive and a bit sure about this. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Dr. Rajiv Chibber, Vice President with Sajanan Medical Technologies Limited. Uh, the question asked is a very pertinent question. I think India is galloping to become one of the best investment destinations for medical devices. Over the last a decade or so, medical devices has caught much attention that was needed and we are now no more the dwarfed cousin of the pharmaceutical industry. I think uh, in the last five odd years, the government has made enough efforts to create a good medical devices hub in the country. Uh, the PLI schemes, the medical devices parks, the PRIP scheme, the focus on R&D, the focus on innovation, the focus on industry academia linkages through NIPERS and other industries is surely going to take India to become the next medical devices hub. A uh, couple of things that we feel needs to really build very strongly is the development of a strong ecosystem. And uh, we're sure that with the government's consistent efforts, this ecosystem can actually create wonders towards new age technologies being created in India, from India for the world. And I would really like to stress upon the fact that more and more industry academia linkages need to be done uh, because we have now a full medical device industry which is ready to engulf more and more professionals, bio uh, professionals, professionals in engineering, professionals in economics, professionals in even digital health technologies. And this will surely take India to become more resilient in terms of the approach towards healthcare and take forward the Honorable Prime Minister's vision of not only a healthy India, but also a India that is Atmanirbhar, a India that can actually provide the world with quality and valuable medical devices. Thank you very much. We are at a cusp of revolution in the medical devices space. Through the national medical devices policy, India has taken on some very ambitious goals. Uh, that will make us a top five global medical devices hub in the manufacturing of medical devices. Hence, you know, as we embark on this journey, we don't have to take the same route that uh, US, Japan, Germany or other countries did. We must do it right to begin with by investing in medical devices that are smart and that are connected. 
essentially the devices that are continuously generating huge amount of data on the clouds and servers and powered by artificial intelligence making these devices available to people where they are at the point of care at their homes and continuously monitoring their health is the only way the healthcare ecosystem can scale for the future generation so my call to the venture capitalists to the industry to all the thought leaders in the medical devices space is to go out there and from day one promote the medical devices startups the companies the innovators who are building the medical devices for the future that are smart and that are connected thank you healthcare as a sector in india has been under invested for years but that's changing now especially in the post pandemic we are seeing some fundamental changes happening both at the consumer behavior side which is the people people are getting much more aware about their health and that's getting reflected in the higher purchase of health insurance that we see out there second change that has happened is in the government policy government is getting even more active in shaping the industry policies that are that are going to help grow the company um that's got reflected for example in 2023 the government announced the new medtech policy the third fundamental shift that we see is the investors especially on the venture capitalists and the private equity side coming and putting more money for startup capital and helping companies to grow even bigger as i see it medtech today is 70% dependent on import i don't see any other sector in india that is so dependent on imports and i see that that's going to change with a lot of investments coming into the sector Thank mm-hmm. you.